really like who I am on the other side of creating this podcast with you, you know, because it's like, regardless of how much confidence I think I have, or if I'm good at talking in front of people, it, it really is probably the most vulnerable thing I've done to date. And what's really helpful about you is yes, for sure. My vision and my prayer about it were, were, you know, the North star, but it's like, you were the grounding, you know, where it's like, I could show up regardless of where I was at in my day or what I thought. And it's like, you just brought me to center and into myself of like, you know, what are we doing here? And I also liked that I could let go even more because I knew that you would redirect me to the center of it. I was really able to let go of control and allow the creation of it and the channeling of it and, you know, whatever words you want to, the expression of it. You know, I'm going to be honest when you were like media doula or midwife doula, I was like, oh, come on. (laughs) (laughs) Which is like, that's just my shit, you know, of like, what does that even mean? I mean, like, what is that? And oh, I fucking get it now. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, right. Of course, you know, it is a actual piece of life that's being birthed and I would not wish (laughs) birth on anybody alone. And I just, you know, that calming presence that you have and the ability to keep me focused and to stay on point and to stay on track. And then also to really bring perspective and elements that broadened. I mean, I think when I came to you, I was like, oh, let's do this thing that like, it's great, but it was, it's just so much bigger now, you know, because you were like, well, you know, here's some ideas. And it was like, oh, Jesus, thank God. I mean, it's interesting. When, when we first came together, you were, I remember you said, I'm not even going to bring in my stories. My stories have nothing That's to right. do with what my work is. Mm-hmm. And so I pushed on that and That's right. really challenged you on that. And mm-hmm. what happened was a profoundly personal, yeah. story-driven narrative that completely leads to the purposeful work you are bringing forward right now. Yeah. Well, and the process that happened for me in being able to say and talk more extensively about what the healing was within that story rather than the story. It's like, I really got to experience the reality of my past in a very different way. You know, you leading me through those stories and really connecting the points of like, you know, I had an idea about why I was doing the work before I made the podcast. And it's great. And now I feel so much more rooted and a part of the work that I do. And that's invaluable. I have a really great analogy for it. You know, it's like I feel the creation of the podcast was a very organic flow of water. Everything that you offered to change the structure or direction, you know, it was like the way water responds, right? It's like, oh, here's something that is an obstacle. It's not an obstacle. It goes around it and it just causes the direction to shift a little bit, but all the softness was there and all of the encouragement was there. And the element that you bring is very calm and very grounded and very loving so that, you know, whatever resistance I met in going out of my finger quotes, comfort zone, which is the whole point anyway, but it was just like, it felt possible because you were there. Like it's an investment in your clarity and in your support and nurturing of your own voice and not in any way that's related to vanity. It's like, I really think that there is something to be said when a woman is offering another woman encouragement and softness and allowing them to be holy themselves and being able to participate creatively. The the energetic exchange felt very balanced and mindful. And that's 
yeah, if you want to be more yourself and if you want to find out more about who you are and what you're capable of, get all your money and spend it on a <laughs> podcast. And if you think you can't afford it, don't worry, you will find a way. How do you think our podcast series creation work has impacted the way you show up for your clients and your groups and your work in general? Like I got super clear, more clear than ever on the foundation of my work. So yes, I knew, oh, well, I became a codependency counselor because I was the world's most codependent person. Okay, great. And within that, I also got to fall in love with and appreciate those occurrences in my life so much more than I would have without looking at it through the lens of what it offered me as my vocation, as my sacred work, you know? Really, the other thing I really liked that you helped me with is, you know, it's like I told you about that I wanted to make sure that all my descriptions of everybody and everything was really loving. And in the times when I would be afraid that that wasn't the case, it's like I could really trust your reflection that it's not like that. This is how it sounds. So it, again, it like gave me more confidence and I could relax, stay out of like being so invested in the impact and more invested in the body of work that was being created. Beautiful. The moments of overcoming fear, the the feeling of like when resistance would come up around mm -hmm. this project, mm -hmm. into that, how you overcame that, how you met those moments. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tell you. Every single session we had, I would be like, I don't want to do this. Every single time. I'd be like, nah, I'd rather do something else. No, this is it. And literally it was like, you know, I am paying this woman, <laughs> like sh put your money where your mouth is and show up and do it. And it's the, the payoff is going to be big. The payoff is going to be big. The payoff is going to be, and I just had to trust that, you know, and I have a really, I feel like I have a really sober relationship with my resistance. It's like my resistance doesn't mean anything except I'm about to walk through a membrane of something that is definitely for me. That is definitely, you know, it's like my resistance is an alarm that's like, oh, you're probably going to cry. <laughs> you're probably going to feel something deep. So do it. Especially as, you know, if I'm going to be spouting off to the world about vulnerability, it's like, well, you better suck it up. And every time, I mean, and then every time it was miraculous. And every time after it was like, course I should have done that you know and I'd remember it the next time you know oh you think you don't want to go well remember how amazing you felt you know after and how great that was and how it changed the course of the rest of your day and you know I mean and it's like people would ask me how my podcast is going I'd just be like it's indescribable you know it's a ceremony I, I can't possibly tell you what's happening other than I am turning into a person that I really like with this like this is turning me into a woman that I want that I that I want to be and I know I am and of course it's in through our relationship with you how you offer the container really let me be more vulnerable and know that you know okay well this is you know my prayer for a podcast is to like really let people see that I'm a person and like this is what's happening and knowing that you know it was safe and you were present you weren't going to miss anything you weren't going to let me fall on my face and um there was always a big payoff you know and it's like when I would be crying and you would cry it was like oh yeah she's right here I mean it was it really felt very unconditionally loving and I mean I don't have a lot of experiences and I mean I, I I wouldn't really call myself an artist and I really got to experience with you like the glory of creation 
instead of it being about like, and the end product product is great. I love the end product, but it's really a relief to be able to be so grounded in the creation and every place that takes you rather than the end product. And I, I don't know if I've experienced that before.